Welcome back to Crowns Crypto K. Waking up for a nice early Wednesday morning. Hope everyone's having a beautiful Wednesday. Hope everyone's having the best Wednesday possible you could ever have in your good old cryptocurrency life. As always, wishing you the best of the best. We got some events coming up today. No Ethereum fork, or perhaps not, as far as far as I know. We also have SIBO futures expiring, and perhaps Big Bags Vlad is in trouble as well. So let's get in a live scene. I left you off yesterday when we uh, where were we last? Where were we yesterday? I think we were working on this red dildo right over here. Uh, more importantly, though, on the daily dildo time frame, we are having the ten simple moving average cross to the downside to the yellow 21 exponential moving average, which is going to be my next signal essentially for myself. Again, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but I am short just for verification on this. Um, I am, I, I basically uncovered my 6300 short um, by uh, where, uh, where did I get rid of it? I uh, got rid of it at, yeah, down around here. Uh, looks like I got filled at 3592. Okay, great. And then I added on a little bit of a short at 35. Yeah, basically the same price essentially. Anyways, overall, um, I am looking for this to start to turn down. Uh, yes, yesterday it was a little bit more of a, a little, little bit more contentious in the lower time frames. You know, all higher time frames are bearish, but the big news is that essentially, essentially Bitcoin just fallen over after this area right over here. So again, if we do want to just plot out these lower time frames, this is essentially what I'd be looking at. And as long as we're below 3606 on something like GDAX, you know, BitMEX, they're all going to be about the same in, the, in that area. If you're trading against US dollar, uh, then yes, I am looking for this to kind of come a little bit lower. Uh, we did, it looks like we did uh, bounce off to support right over here at 3566 on first pass. I'd imagine that the second pass does not have the same sort of reaction. Overall, though, it does feel droopy, does feel like things want to come downwards and the more important things and, and, and always more importantly the higher time frames are pretty damn clear in what they want to do in fact just just taking this off you know you're having a pretty bad exponential moving or sorry just pretty bad moving average cross right over here uh daily uh oscillators we are back in the bearish control zone on the rsi right over here trending below the exponential not good we are doing nothing according to the dmx rough riders unite and let's go to the two day the two days where the action has been happening yeah and, and here we go this is what i've been looking at on the two day DMX Rough Riders definitely activity ahead as you can see right over here getting above the 25 uh, signal line and the DMI minus saying hey pay attention bitch also RSI on your two-day total time frame is uh, heavily in the bearish control zone and also trending below the exponential as well especially with yesterday's a uh, little bit of a downturn we are fully fully below this area this will confirm later tonight if Bitcoin is here or lower by 7 p.m. Eastern at time so that's just gonna be another kind of you know consolidating factor um, and also also, still this uh, this hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point over here, uh, still kind of playing out as your also it makes a higher high price actually making a lower high in the context of an overall downtrend. Typically speaking, that'll send the RSI at least to like this area down around here, the lower end of the bearish control zone. Um, so again, you know, uh, I, I did want to be a little bit defensive yesterday as. Really, it, it would have been so much nicer if Bitcoin could have just popped back up to seventy or sorry, thirty-seven fifty, um, and uh, and given and, and given me a you know a better entry on my short. But hey, you know, price action is price action. This is how I decided to respond to the events of the last uh, twenty-four hours since we last spoke. And essentially, you know, just just looking at the two-day dollar time frame right over here. As long as we're below this thirty-six uh, ninety-two kind of a local low right over here, the swing low. Uh, yeah, I am bearish. This is an M formation, a pattern of distribution overall. A very very corrective formation on the greater trend over here. You have that very nice orderly drop off in volume um, and being governed by all major moving averages. Again, death cross uh, happening way back on over here. That was the impetus for taking the 6300 short right over here on the on the rejection of the 21 exponential moving average. You got the same thing right over here. So it's basically been the same story. You know, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend, as they say. Not only that, but two day dildo uh, stochastics over here are pointed down. More importantly, they are still gaining momentum. You see you, you see how they really uh, open up and widen away from each other and also and perhaps lesser uh, spoken on is you're getting rejected from the more bullish control zone right over here after trying once and twice snaking around so to me that is giving confluence and that is giving uh and that is giving perspective on on what the bigger accounts are doing and for just whatever just so, just something i've noticed in 24 7 markets the two-day dollar time frames seems to get things better than the daily actually because i think it just accounts for the downtime on basically saturday uh better because really you know it's it's not it's a 24 7 market but like one of those days is kind of off and that's saturday because sunday you know you open up with futures on at like 6 p.m eastern time and then you know asia's waking up basically on on uh, on, on sunday as well for for their monday you know obviously perspective i'm getting this backwards but uh but i, I hope that that does make sense anyways uh three day double time frame we will be getting a did we get a new tick last night yeah we did yeah we did so 
Uh, so, so completely new dildo. I believe the three-day dildo uh, stokes over here are coming right into the neutral zone. You can see that they are losing momentum right here. If those dues cross over, getting rejected from getting out of the neutral zone and trending back back into the bear zone, which I think is kind of likely to be to be quite honest we're going to go through some external reasons why um in a, in a second but if that if that does happen that's uh that's going to be your next big signal as well also dmx adx god damn it dmi adx is what i mean to say uh is giving you a short signal as well so not only the two day is giving you a fresh short signal but so is a three day and this is this is actually quite a powerful one indeed you can see that the last time that we actually had a short signal was actually right over here and this was the break of six thousand in early november um, um, so again, in, in three days, also just that nice M formation. M is for murder. M is for distribution. M is for get ready, bulls, because it's time for a red dildo party. Invitation, you. Anyways, uh, ten simple moving average, also governing price action as well. Over here, you see that it kind of cradled it in this, in this, uh, in this very low volume like distribution like uh, pattern right over here, getting rejected from the three seven seven. The twenty one exponential is going to be crossing the downside on that, and the ten simple moving average is now sloped to the downside. That is not what you want to fucking have. Just to put it very bluntly, um, over. Overall, all higher time frames are bearish. Uh, weekly over here, again, you know, weekly printed a bearish engulfing dildo on last week's. Typically speaking, these have an extremely high probability to be followed up, followed up in that same direction, at least on, you know, uh, <laughs> at least a little bit, at least a little bit. And we have not actually taken off the low of this uh, 3481 and a half dildo right over here just yet. Um, you can also see that the uh, that the 21 or sorry that the 10 simple moon average is starting to come down and uh, govern price action. In fact, I think this is best seen on bits stamp which has more price action history you have the 200 exponential govern you know governing all the highs of this uh what 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 really is th this this is a dead cat balance i mean you know i've been holding off from saying these more aggressive things because it's not necessarily appropriate and i don't want to you know <sighs> You should be more lenient as an analyst and especially as a trader with looking at this sort of stuff. But to put it bluntly, I mean, this is not good. Um, it's just kind of a matter of time, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about our what about a medium time frames like a two hour? What are we looking at over here? Yeah, ten simple crossing over the twenty one governing this and uh, that. Uh, you know, as long as we're below this area right over here, very very likely to to carry on further downwards. Um, the only thing that I can kind of come up with a counterpoint right now to what I'm saying is maybe SIBO's exp expiration a little bit in like, a, I don't know, a couple hours, I think it is, um, might have an effect. You might get some volatility that might send this thing back up. If we could get back up to 3750, that'd be great for an actual real, I'd love to put on a real position right over there. For now, I feel like like this is not a real position. I mean, 26 Bitcoins is, is nothing. Um, it's not even fucking worth the time, even on a, even on a streamer account. But but my point is, is that, you know, looking at this, looking at the SIBO positions right over here that, okay, that's uh, VIX. Let's go to SIBOs. Yeah, SIBO. I mean, there's not too many people trading them. The commercial positions are 239 on the short side. So that's probably why we had that rally. Uh, what was it like a day and a half ago? Because if you're short on futures, then you're going to be covering by buying, you know, the underlying spot. So they drove up price to cover that, you know, lock in profits, as I'm sure that those shorts were going in higher, especially if this was, you know, done about a month ago. And, um, and, and once they expire, well, now you're going to be naked once again. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to roll them as new, you know, as a new expiration comes out, which should be today. So that would actually be a more bearish thing than anything. But, you know, maybe you get some sort of variability in there. You never know. Maybe the non-commercial positions take over. Very unlikely. Although still, most, most of these guys are short as well. Um, so I'd imagine, you know, if you are trading on an exchange like SIBO, even if you are non-commercial, which is technically a non-professional, I mean, you probably have the margin to do this as like an actual hedge, um, you know, because you, you actually do have to put up like 5x your margin just to hold one contract, which is worth five Bitcoin to begin with. So it's, you know, it's quite price intensive. You'd have to, you, you know, you'd have to have somewhat of an account to actually trade this. So I'd imagine someone with that amount of money in the, in the markets, they're not just, you know, your average Joe trying to play Mr. Gambler going to Vegas, but just doing it online. Um, so those guys, I'd imagine, would be covering their positions as well. But hey, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to maybe come up with with, with a reason for for representing the other side, that's what I would say. Maybe those guys aren't going to do that, but I'd say it's unlikely. Um, the way that this price action is working out right now, I, I mean. 
I've been saying this for a long time, uh, but that's because it's it's very important. This is extremely corrective price action. I mean, look at look at the orderly drop off in volume as you just go all the way through here, lower highs all the way through. In fact, you know, going back to our fresh chart over here on GDAX, um, I, I think this is, you know. <sighs> You have lower highs and lower lows for over a year. There's nothing has changed in literally over a year now. And uh, as, as we say, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And uh, what is this creating right here? Well, well, it looks to me like another ascending triangle, perhaps. Again, when you actually do uh, siphon off this area and look at this pattern that Bitcoin put in for about two weeks, two and a half weeks over here, it made a symmetrical triangle that we broke to the downside. That was confirmed, I think, a little bit last week um, right over here. And that does have a measured move pointing you down to this, this horizontal support. Uh, at your form, uh, basically, at your form lows at around 3250, 3300 ish area. Um, and, it, you know, this is in play as long as Bitcoin is essentially below the 3850 ish area. Um, the reason why Bitcoin's kind of having a lull right over here, a lull, um, you know, maybe you could say it's because bots and algorithms are are, are, are buying the 618 right over here. But uh, that already happened on your proverbial potential left, sorry, right, right uh, Quasimodo shoulder right over here, which again, it, this was not an inverted head and shoulder. There's nothing, if, <laughs> If, listen, I don't listen to other YouTube analysts or anything like that, but people always ask me, like, what do you think of this person? Well, here's what I can say. If they were calling this an inverted head and shoulders, you, I would highly suggest running the other way <laughs> and, and avoiding them like the fucking plug. This was in no way, shape, or form any sort of reversal pattern. There, It was... It, it, it's not even up for discussion, really. Uh, again, this is this is hopium versus reality. Uh, and I know I'm being a little bit more aggressive than I typically am. Um... Or, or than or than I typically like to be, but it's it's just I've just get, I've just gotten so many questions like that, man. So, so to put a blanket statement on it, uh, yeah, if they were calling that your inverted head and shoulders, uh, no, Quasimodo is not a bullish pattern. In fact, he's quite bearish because well, he's like you know he's like retarded in the scientific sense, so he's going down, baby. Anyways, uh, this first pass over here on the six one eight, um, that you know that was your traditional response where the bots and algorithms pick it up. You rally all the way back up to the two three six bots sell that. That's going to be your target if you were buying the six one eight. Comes back down, gets picked up. By the 618 again and then now they sell the 0.5 not even letting it get to the 382 right over here which would which which actually is is one of is is one of the other reasons why i wanted to be a little more hesitant with taking a position um but with the activity of the last 12 hours well it, it looks like that's going to be a little bit less likely i guess it's still possible as long as we are not breaking a 3566 area right over here the support um but again looking at the higher time frames uh as far as I'm concerned, the direction is down. Again, the big, you know, just taking everything off right over here and looking at the exponentials on the four-hour dildo chart, we spoke about this this death cross right over here, the green 55 and the purple 200, which gave you a glimpse of a potential golden cross as you were nearing the breakout point of that symmetrical triangle right over there. But with that major red dildo being shoved upon the bulls and shish kebabing them like a goddamn skewer, well, that is telling you and giving you and giving you really great insight into what the Boston algorithms are programmed to do right now. And they are defending the sell side. Again, when you have this sort of thing, when you have a golden cross, I mean, that that is some pretty damn good, uh, pretty damn good bullish implications for Bitcoin, even in an overall downturn. I mean, this was, you know, at 6,700 right over here, you got the golden cross on the four hour dildo time frame. That's a nice 10 percent move, you know, all the way up to 7,400. Same, you know, same thing over here, except a much greater move actually from 66 to uh, 84, you know, I mean, almost two thousand dollars not bad at all almost a 30 i think about a 30 percent move uh but understand that when you get that negated at the last second when you like sh when you show it for a second what's really going on is the is is the more sophisticated bots and algorithms are actually baiting the less sophisticated ones and the over aggressive ones to get into that long trade so that they can generate liquidity for them it's because some people will you know most pro most most bots and algorithms are not like they're not that good. They're not that good. I mean, people make it. People make it sound like these these AIs are like some sort of Terminator from an advanced species. They're not. You know, very like very few of them are. The the really well known quant firms that have you know access to millions and millions and millions of dollars, they can actually put together some pretty damn sophisticated ones that that will bait those less sophisticated ones into uh, into filling their cells, which is basically what you saw right over here. And so we have all this liquidity generated, engineered for the bigger accounts coming down right over here you see it on this on the volume characteristics as well and um 
you know, this is just a major pattern of distribution is what is what I'm looking at right over here. Uh, four hour total time frame. We are actually getting a, uh, are we getting a sell signal on the DMX ADX, DMI ADX? God damn it. Keep on getting it wrong. Um, kind of, but not, uh, actually it, it loosened up right over here, giving a little bit of divergence actually on the DMI minus, um, well, actually, technically, it's not divergence. We're not making lower lows or anything like that. Uh, but overall, you know, I'd be essentially bearish on this in the more immediate time frames, as long as we're below this area right over here at 3606, as long as we're closing two hour dildos below there. Uh, direction feels like downwards to me. Uh, again, it, you know, there is an event in, in a few hours. So perhaps there is going to be reaction on that. Typically, with event, you know, uh, uh, events like this, you'll get some flighty price action and technical analysis on the lower time frames, like we're looking at right here. And make no mistake, a two hour, a two hour or four hour is a lower time frame. Uh, is not going to mean is not going to make too is not going to mean too much. The higher time frames will still get respected. You know, the higher time frames. Um, uh, we'll, we'll still have some, uh, we'll still have some weight, but the lower time frames, they'll just get blown right through. So, uh, so if you're trading the five minute, well, good fucking luck, man. Anyways, um, you know, uh, we, we spoke about this yesterday. I just want to kind of go over it really, really quickly, but, uh, we, we've been speaking about this for the last few days. Um, this, this exponential moving average cross right over here, the 21 and the 55, uh, to the downside, as long as we're respecting that as resistance on the 21, I am bearish as well. You can see that now we're below all major moving averages over here and using this one as uh, resistance. This is representative not on the 8, the 10, and the 12, but uh, but basically that cross is pretty damn powerful. The 10 hour is really, 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 really important to me right here. And uh, this one is actually giving you a fresh sell signal on the uh, on the DMI and uh, ADX. Again, Rough Riders unite because this one is, <laughs> that is usually a pretty damn powerful signal. Um, Jewel is, Jewel has enough juice to, you know, you'll, you'll notice when things start trending downwards, the Jewel, the Jewel is not really designed to do that, but it, but it actually does. It's, it's so weird that the jewel just gets this right anyways it's it's not designed for that though when, when i was designing this it, it like it i wanted it to get ranging price action like as perfectly as possible well to uh what when you are trending downwards it actually gives you this nice like kind of workaround where you pop back up and you just get con uh, caught in the bearish control zone and you start working around this area so you see you, you know you see it consistently just uh stab back down so if we do start to tick back downwards on the next uh, on the next couple of dildos on, on the 10 hour that's that's going to be a pretty damn you know powerful signal to me as well it's going to likely come into confluence with a break of 3500 um but uh, if 3,500 is broken, you know, yeah, you're going to have your supports on the way down, of course. But uh, again, this the measure move off this symmetrical triangle has, has been unchanged. Um, there's, you know, nothing. Uh, I don't really see any reason why 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 it's not. I mean, until until Bitcoin gets back above 80, 3850, uh, I am looking for this to get hit. Um uh, to be to be quite clear, there will be supports along the way, just like you had right over here. You'll have you'll likely have one right over here at 3430, um, and our current and our current low of this downtrend right over here at 3500ish area. Uh, but hey, you know bounces are likely just going to be that, just bounces. Uh, now I want to go over here to Mr. Beaterall again, having an event or or I guess a lack of event um, as of yesterday. The fork has been canceled or or moved back without a date or anything like that, um, which is just you know it's it's like perfect timing, man. Again, a bearish chart. We've been looking at this for quite some time. This was your big signal right over here. So this is a great example of sh of show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. We've been bearish on this for quite some time, ever since this area right over here. Uh, this is a Wyckoff distribution top, a very low volume hang at the top. You have this, again, same thing as Bitcoin, um, but even more pronounced over here. This very orderly drop off in volume going all the way through. Uh, and putting in a head and shoulders top, actually, this does look like a right shoulder. We've come all the way back down to the neckline, which is at 117-ish area on... Uh, Finex, so check your exchange. It will differ if you're trading on BitMexico. It's going to be completely different, like way down at the low at the lower teens. Um, but uh, but again, hey, if this area breaks, very fucking bad, very fucking bad. We looked at the four hour yesterday. We were looking at the death cross. Uh, I think I left you off yesterday when this dildo was being put in, and that was a rejection of the 200. We said, hey, it's extremely likely that this is going to be respected now. This is insight in what the in what the bigger accounts are doing, and that's exactly what was confirmed uh, one dildo later. Um, so so while you know you might flail flail around in this area. Uh, it's it's irrelevant to me. This is a pretty damn powerful cross, even on the four hour dildo time frame. Of course, the daily is going to be you know the most the most important when it comes to that. I mean, uh, you know, higher time frame the better. So you know, two day, three day is going to be even more important than that. But the daily is kind of like the gold standard, which was the impetus for sending this thing like from five hundred dollars down down to here. I think when you got it. Uh, but just just to give you an, exa uh, an example of of what ha like the last time we had a death cross on the four hour dildo time frame, which this is actually a perfect cross by the way. If you're in the technical analysis program, you know exactly what I'm looking at, what I'm referencing right here with every 
everything kind of bunched up. Uh, but you had the golden cross right over here. That was, you know, that's kind of leading into your top right over there. But uh, but before that, the the time before that, that you got death cross was right over here. This was the break of 210, which was also the break of 6,000 for Bitcoin itself. Just to give you an idea of what the implications of for that have been. Um, in fact, were we even golden cross before that? Uh, it was getting very close. Oh, uh, no, we actually, sorry. It was never, it wasn't even golden cross before that. Wow. Uh, wow. This thing has not been, oh my God, man. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. This thing does not. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been, a, it's been a long time since, uh, $669, uh, right over here. Wow. Wow. So, uh, do I think that we're going to have another reaction like that from $669 on that death cross? No, I don't. But, uh, you do have a head and shoulders reversal pattern over here. You do have a, you do have a white cough top. You have your first markdown redistribution going on right over here. And again, uh, when we are talking about patterns, um, everything's in place now, the, but the most important piece, if you're going to be a pattern trader, which I am not, I'm not a pattern trader. I don't, really cared all that much about them except for triangles because triangles are great they're they're awesome man um but uh but 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 the next big thing that i'm looking for is actually twofold i want to see 117 broken that is the biggest baddest thing to be doing um and then also that is going to likely be accompanied by a major spike in volume to the downside that's going to be the next two things those are the most important two things um and, uh, and that's going to be full on confirmation. There is a mesh move to be made on this baby. And if you're, if you're, if you're a Mr. Buterol fan, look away, look away right now. I'm, I'm giving you a warning right now. Just look away, look away and close your ears. Definitely close your ears. All right. The mesh move would be pointing down all the way to $69. <laughs> wrecked. Oh my God. Just get fucking wrecked. Mr. Buterall. Again, just because you have a measure move down there doesn't mean you're like, you know, 100% going to hit it or anything like that. And I think it's, I think it's a little bit far fetched to think that, that Mr. Buterall is just going to shoot through this, uh, through, uh, through, through this bottom support, 85 and a half dollars on the first way through. I mean, e e even before that you have, you know, you have these supports on the way down, just like Bitcoin. And for myself, I do believe that Bitcoin's probably going to spend some time going sideways in this range. Again, when you are, you know, creating a potential, um, descending triangle uh, as we're looking at right over here, you know, on the greater time frames, uh, the apex on this doesn't come in. I mean, we, we can't even see it over here, uh, but it wouldn't be coming in until way over here, which would literally be, you know, sometime in, in, in April, most likely. Uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that it has to wait literally until April to get, you know, resolution on that. But as long as we're kind of, you know, filling out this area, creating lower highs and bouncing off the 3250 ish area, which by the way, is also the 200 simple moving average on the weekly dolo time frame, which is incredibly important to me. Uh, if we can put this on and show this uh, in visual view right over here. There we go. And look at that guy. It's going to take, you know, I think it's going to take some time to actually chew through this area. Again, uh, this area looking extremely similar to this area right over here to me. Again, volume uh, in relation to your parabolic cycle, extremely similar to your volume in relation to this parabolic cycle right over here. The percentage drawdown leading into this area, very, very similar as well, going all the way from, you know, that, that, that consolidation, that descending triangle consolidation down to this low right over here about you know 54 percent you could say and from this consolidation right over here down to the low of this guy right over here 53 and a half percent again doesn't need to be exact but it is just very interesting that these have some great confluence with each other the even the bounce up from that area sorry let's actually zoom in if we go dildo body to dildo body which i believe is the more accurate way to be doing this you have about a 21 and a half percent bounce if we go from dildo body to dildo body right over here uh, we have something like, you know, yeah, about a 20, you know, 23% bounce. It's in the same range. So that's close enough. It's close enough to me. Um, but my point is, is that uh, you spend about what, like two, three, two or three months going sideways in this area right over here. You know, we've spent about a month, month and a half in this area. You could certainly spend some more time. Uh, I'd be th my, you know, if I'm giving my opinion, which again, I don't trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis, but I would say, you know, probably sometime in like mid-February would kind of make sense for it to break um, the 200 simple. It's again, the, the, the 200 simple, I do not want to be battling that. So while I am short right now, I'm very happy to be closing short positions and going neutral anywhere around that area. Even if it's like 3,300, 3,350, 3,400, if, if, if so be, if I see any sort of buy pressure coming in around that area, I don't want to be caught in another move to the, to the top of the triangle. And perhaps, you know, perhaps he even breaks the top of the triangle, just like you did over here. I mean, over here, instead of, uh, in, instead of, you know, creating, creating a triangle, which maybe we could see better on like a daily let's actually go through this this is going to be quite interesting uh so we're going to go back to the same area in 2014 
And I think that there's a couple similarities that people might be interested in, um, a couple more similarities. Uh, so it's this area right over here, right? So you can actually see a very similar signature uh, where you put in this high right over here and that governs your high right over here. And you're actually, you know, very, very similar to what we're doing right now. And you create basically a descending triangle, which actually does break out to the upside. But remember, when you get a breakout to the upside on a descending triangle and that fails, what does that end up creating? Well, it ends up creating a basically a rising channel or in this or in this scenario, an ascending broadening wedge, which is typically a pattern of, again, distribution and uh, and, and further downside. Um, so we kind of have a, we kind of have a similar uh, scenario what's going on right now. So all I'm saying is that, hey, even if this does, you know, even if this guy over here does, uh, you know, do, does bounce off this area right over here and even takes out this upper resistance, you know, maybe it gets like 4,500 or, or whatever it might be. I'd still be looking to be a seller. Uh, it's, there, there, there's a lot of things that I need to see before I get overall bullish on Bitcoin or at least not bearish. Sorry, more importantly, not bearish. I'm going to get not bearish before, before I get bullish on Bitcoin. Um, but basically what I'm saying is uh, first things first, I want to see a higher high on the daily. Haven't done that in, you know, over a year. So that'd be a really good start, but it's not going to get you finished. The, the second and much more important thing that I'd be looking for is a weekly delay, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average right over here, the purple line on the weekly. Um, if we could both open and close again, keyword open and close above the 200, then I would immediately change a lot of what, a, a lot of my opinions and a lot of what I'm saying you'd, you'd hear an immediate sh shift in tone on my, uh, on myself. And I'd actually probably even get into a little bit of a little bit of a position to the upside. Uh, but that's not gonna, that's not the full on thing. The, 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 the last and perhaps most important thing is is a is at least like a daily dildo preferably a weekly dildo closing above this 6,000 area right over here why is that important because Bitcoin spent about almost a year consolidating at this area putting in that descend, descending triangle before letting leading into this more aggressive uh, downwards phase so if Bitcoin could get back above that area from a more traditional uh, standpoint that would be a negation of that and well it, it would be it would be a new thing for me which in, in my opinion, would be very fucking bullish. So uh, again, Bitcoin's nowhere near doing any of those three things uh, as of right now. So, you know, but always want to be reminding myself those uh, those sorts of things just because they, they are important. Um, and it's good to repeat. Anyways, I do want to bring up something else as well. Uh, and uh, man, who was this? Uh, sorry, I, I completely forget who get who who aware me of this, but I want to give you credit. It, it was on Discord. I really do appreciate this. Um, but we actually do have <laughs> we actually do have the MBT sort of now on um, uh, on Trading View, and this is this was created by the creator uh, Willy Woo, which is very helpful, um, very helpful. And we're gonna look at a few things right now. Uh, re with relation to this, let's go to a weekly actually. Yeah, so it's down around here. You can see, let me just make sure it's yeah it's showing up on stream. Great, awesome, good. And let's see. Okay, so so MBT signal, right? Uh, let's look at this area right over here. Let's look at this area right over here. Okay, this is kind of hard to see. This is 2014, right? Oh, come on, you fuck. Come on, you fuck. Yeah, it's, it's coming in right over here at the 140 area. Remember the, the kind of relation that we just made between this area and what we're looking at right now. Now you do see a similar, a similar signature going on right over here. Actually, this is not similar. Hold on, what's going on over here? Um, let's see, hold on. We're actually lower on this. Is this right? I think that this is actually wrong. Is this updated? Hmm. I don't think that I don't, maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. I might've, I might've looked at the wrong one. We're going to have to go to the actual source itself. Sorry about that guys. Uh, let's go over to the, here, here's the actual source. Okay. So this is a source. Again, we were just looking at the 2014 area right over here after that drop down, And then it's actually, um, hugging this area at the 100 oscillator. Uh, you can see that we're basically in the same posturing in 2018 after com after coming off that 50% drop right over here. Again, this area very similar to this area right over here, and same same sort of signature on the oscillator. Why is this important? Well, this is a completely completely unique thing that we're not that's not even related to the price volume and time indicators that we look at you know on traditional charts. This is literally the sim uh, it's it's a network value divided by divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using forward back removed averages to create a smoothing line. So the fact that we're having this very similar signature right over here to this guy right over here is concerning to say the least is concerning to say the least because it's you, you know it's it's suggesting that 
the bottom is well and far away. Uh, this thing typically pa typically uh, calls the bottom um, in this area where my curse currently is now are a little bit lower. And you can see that when we're literally in the middle between the highs and the lows of that, not necessarily the best signal. Anyways, uh, lower time frames right now for Bitcoin. And let's go over here to BitMexico. I'm curious, I see that it's taken up right now. Um, do I wanna be adding positions here or not? Probably not. I do wanna make sure, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let it run for a second. Not a big deal. Um, very easy to cover. Anyways, let's go check out GBTC. I forgot to do that uh, this morning. Um, but GBTC, again, filling out this bear flag that we've been looking at. We looked at this uh, yesterday night on stream. Uh, we saw that it was a rejection of the yellow 21 exponential moving average right over here. You got the nice hangman dildo at the top and then fall through to the downside. But still no full break of this area. And I want to see, see break plus volume of this $4.22 area. Or sorry, $0.21 cent area. If that does happen, then you know this has been a great leading indicator for Bitcoin for the past over a year so i'd imagine that if it you know if, if it gave you another signal well i'd be i'd certainly be interested in taking it uh it still would have to get through this bottom support down around here at around three dollars and 84 cents but again uh bear flag does technically have a mesh move pointing all the way down to uh oh uh oh turn your head away turn your head away it's pointing all the way down to about two dollars and 50 cents area right over here this former support going on from uh may of last or sorry two years ago of may um again not good not good and uh, suggesting that Bitcoin has plenty more downside if if, if that does indeed get uh, get ticked off. Um, 12 hour over here, you know, clearly being uh, governed by the yellow 20 max bench moving average. Yes, you do have a gap all the way up here at uh, the four dollars and 67 cent region. But just because you have a gap there doesn't mean it needs to be filled anytime soon. It, you know, I've seen every gap that I've ever seen has been filled in, tr in traditional markets. Not I don't know about OTC. I don't really follow OTC, but I'd guess it's maybe less of a thing because like a lot of these things, you know, come and go. Um, but, uh, but the timing of that is completely variable. You know, it could be years. It, it could be, it could be tomorrow. It could be years. We don't, you don't, you don't know. Um, so again, just, just be aware of that sort of fact. I'd be watching this on like a two hour and four hour dildo time frame If this area breaks with in confluence with big volume, this is going to suggest that this pattern over here is being resolved to the downside. Again, you have the, you have the volume signature of, of a corrective move, of a corrective consolidation, and then likely, you know, gearing up for the next move down um, is the way that it looks like to me. Anyways, uh, what else do we have to look at? Okay, let's go look at uh, Mr. Mrs. Litecoin over here. Mrs. Litecoin at $31, again, joining the party as well. I don't even have a, really a chart for this. I, I mean, I've just taken everything off, just literally deleted everything. Uh, f you know, basically a fit, well, it's not, a, it's, was this a failed inverted head and shoulders? Litecoin actually did have an inverted head and shoulders right over here. This would have been your neckline. You obviously did not hit, I mean, it's not you. Mrs. Litecoin did not hit her her full-on measured move, which would have been, I think, like at 50 bucks or something like that. Maybe let's let's redo this one. I'm sorry, 44 and a half dollars or 44 and a quarter right over here, which actually would have made a lot of sense, you know, coming back from this uh, this consolidation leading into this more aggressive downtrend. Um, but you'll notice that if you that if you extend this neckline right over here, uh, and go forwards. Well, this, you know, when you have a when you have a breakout like this and it fails before getting to its proverbial measured move, or I mean, this is a reversal pattern to begin with. So if the reversal pattern fails to a reverse and you come back below the neckline, that's usually an extremely bad uh, signal. So uh, so what I can say for Miss, Mrs. Litecoin is that as long as you're below $32.25, this resistance right over here on GDAX, uh, sorry, Coinbase Pleb, um, pretty fucking bearish as well uh again you have you have the moving averages over here kind of opening up and gaining momentum away from each other again think of that as like a macd histogram it's just telling you that the momentum is building up uh, once again to the to the downside um this is also one of the reasons why i don't use a macd i mean also just because no one fucking uses it right it's funny I, someone sent me a video of like tony vase and uh and his dad tyler and and they're like using the macd but they don't even understand how it works they literally don't understand how it works they're just like oh well it's ticking more this way and then it hasn't crossed yet it's like no that's actually not how you use it i have a video on how to use it it's in the tentacle indicators uh in strategies playlist i don't use the macd myself i don't think it's that useful i don't really it doesn't work with my strategy that well it's not the best thing and i don't really care all that much on what it says i'd rather use my exponential moving averages because i'll tell you a shit ton more about price action but hey it's not, i mean if it works for you, don't let me tell you otherwise. But usually most people have no fucking clue how to even use it. They think, oh, you just look at the cross. Oh, it's good cross. It's like, no, it's not how it works. Um, 
Bitcoin taking up right now. Let's see, 35.95. Uh, uh, are we going to get another run at this resistance? Um, could this get taken out before, uh, before what's it called? Um, uh, expiration. Uh, again, we might get some floaty, flighty price action before expiration. I mean, if things do take out this 36.10-ish uh, area, then probably probably make another run for this 36.69-ish uh, uh, area right over here. I mean, I don't really see too much stopping you along the way. Uh, but again, you know, very, very low volume action right over here. Uh, unless this thing really starts, you know, taking off, I'd, I'd be saying, well... Let's see. Let's see how it reacts when it when it reaches a 21, uh, which is right about now. So we're, we'll actually be able to watch this one together. Um, as I'm probably not going to end this, this this video before that happens. Okay, so let's go over and check out ripples in the meantime. Mr. Nipples over here, Ripple Nipples. Uh, let's go to the three day. That's been the best chart for this guy. Again, you know, back below this area, right over here, 35. What is this? 34. About 35 cents. A little bit under 35 cents. As long as you're below that area, not good, man. Really not good. Whoa, 36.15. Okay, well there we go. And now, now, now the game does indeed begin. Right. Uh, there we go. So yeah, I just actually just took off my short and uh and i've gone back to neutral it looks like um let's see yeah yeah i'm back back on a uh, little bit um a little bit of that so again i'll be looking at somewhere right around this range in, in this range i'll probably let go of that i'm gonna guess that this is going to come into confluence with uh with with SIBO's closing um but yeah just kind of float, floating around again that's well, people just rolling their position. Anyways, going back on over here to Mr. Ripples. Um, Mr. Ripples, the three-day doodle chart is getting it pretty damn well in my opinion. Uh, as long as you're below 30, a little bit below 35 cents, really bad. Uh, three-day doodle death cross right over here. As long as you're below the 21 exponential from a higher time frame perspective, really fucking bad as well. Um, and uh, and 28 cents down around here is kind of your next big support. Really don't want to see that area fail. If that area does fail, 28 cents, then don't see too much holding you up from like the mid to high teens. Uh, so that is the that that is a pretty big deal. Um, again, I would say there's certainly a lot of bearish things going on in this one, but uh, overall, you know, at least it's not pumping and dumping like most things in this market. Most things are just pump all the way up, dump all the way back down. I mean, you could you could at least give Mr. Ripples uh, the benefit of the doubt with that, but overall you know, this is not a good chart. It's like the same story as Stellar, right? Same story as Stellar and essentially that, uh, what we're at, like 10 and a half cents. I mean, it's, I mean, it's held up most of its rally in comparison to, to the majority of the riffraff in this market. But looking at this guy, you know, fresh three day dildo death cross right over here. Um, I'm going to, I mean, this is, this is bad. You know, you have a bull trap right over here. You've broken the year long consolidation of the downside right over here. Retested right over here. Distribution M formation right over here. Uh, as long as you're below 11 cents, very fucking bad. Very bad. Uh, while I think that it probably does bounce around nine and a half cents or something like that. Uh, if Bitcoin does break 3250, this thing will likely find itself, you know, much lower, much lower into like the mid or sorry, to, into the high single digits uh, down around. I suppose next next area would be about eight and a half cents. And then if that area fails and six and a half cents. So, again, um, going to be uh, this is this is not good. I mean, you have a three, a, a fresh three day double death cross right over here. So even the ones that were like relatively good in comparison to most things in this market are not fucking like are not good right now. Um, anyways, uh, let's see what else do we have. What else do we have to look at? GBDC. We looked at that. Uh, let's look at spies. Yeah. So spies, spies, quite interesting right here. So we looked at this. I was my opinion was wrong in this, but again, this is why I've been very. I hope that I've been very adamant in stating. You know, I don't, I don't trade my opinion, and really the big area that I'd be looking for is the 242, sorry, 262 and a half area. Uh, if it does get there, that's where I'm interested in taking a short, although I don't trade this, this is not financial advice, not financial advisor, blah, 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 blah. Um, but hey, you know, uh, ascending triangle right over here, technically a bull, or typically a bullishly resolved pattern, and it has been resolved to the upside, although, again, volume on this formation right over here is still very lackluster. I would not be surprised if today is like an up open day, opens around 262 and a half, and then that probably sells it off that is a measure move off this sending or yeah this sending triangle going in right around here that's also the three the 377 hourly which is very important to me as well especially in traditional markets not necessarily as much on uh, bitcoin land um daily 55 exponential coming in right around there as well weekly uh weekly 100 exponential coming in right around there as well that's also the uh, the neckline of this head and shoulders reversal pattern looks eerily similar to to mr buterol doesn't it and also if we go into the monthly that's going to be your 21 exponential moving average as well coming in right around there so this this is starting to get a lot uh, it's starting to get a lot more interesting we are in the middle of this uh, month of january so again um 
not too, you know, this is kind of, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, it is not opened and closed. Uh, did we open and close below this guy? Um, it, yeah, we have not opened and closed below the 20 minute exponential in, in, in years. Uh, and that would be my, my market for generally bullish or generally bearish. So yes, I am bearish on this just like I am on Bitcoin. I do believe strongly that new lows will be hit. But it's going to likely take some time, just like Bitcoin, probably even more time than Bitcoin, I'd imagine. Uh, Bitcoin, you know, right over here, I don't want to go through like the full explanation of, of where I think that this thing is likely to go. It's, 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 it's in much more detail than I could do on a video like this in the long term analysis playlist. Definitely go check that one out. I had a new upload in there every Sunday. So it's, uh, it's still pretty damn fresh. Nothing's changed from a higher level perspective. But I'll just quickly go over if, 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 if this 3250 area gets broken right over here, then I'd be looking down towards the next, the next blue box territory at the 886 Fibonacci retracement between uh, 2300 and 2600. The 886 actually is where you did bottom out in 2014. We also have some nice horizontal uh, historical trend lines coming around from this area. We do have the volume profile suggesting some massive activity being thrown down in this uh, 23 to 2600 area as well. Uh, actually, even bigger than what you did at the 6,000 area. And if we go to the BLX index, then the 377 uh, fit, uh, exponential moving average is coming in right around that 2600 level as well. And if we do go and remember that conversation that we had at the beginning of the stream about the uh, about what was it the the descending the potential descending triangle that we're looking at right over here well if we did make a measure move based off this guy at, uh and it does get hit and sorry it, it does get confirmed to the downside again the the trigger for all this is is 3250 breaking which is not just this this former this uh this supported by current low but also the weekly 200 x uh, 200 simple moving average well then the measure move on this guy would be pointing all the way down towards uh-oh 2300 a little bit above 2300 so again a lot of things pointing in that direction and uh and i certainly do uh, and, and that you know i think is a very high probability to be hit but again it's going to take some time i don't think this is happening today tomorrow or even next week or even this month or even perhaps probably next month um it's going to take some time again time analysis is not something that i think can really even be done uh but hey just wanted to get that out there. Uh, overall, looking at this guy down around here, if that does fail, I'm not saying that this is 100%, you know, gonna be the reversal. In fact, if you saw my, my video on risk management that I uploaded uh, early in the early morning hours last night, you know that that can't be done. That's quite literally, you, you'll never know. And when it comes to actual market bottoms being put in, it's not about fucking hyperwave or about your 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 secret exponential moving average. It's not about, it's not about your, your whatever it might be. It's about a big market mover, someone with a, with extremely deep pockets saying, hey, this area looks good to me and I'm gonna buy up so fucking much that you won't be able to see anywhere within 10% of this of this area ever again. That's what's actually gonna happen. It's not dependent upon like, it's not dependent upon really anything else. It, it's highly variable and people making it sound like, like Bitcoin has to do certain things before it gets there. That is wrong, that is wrong. All we can do is come up with potential areas and then triggering points to know if that is gonna work or not. And the only way that you'll even know if the, if we do have a legitimate reversal on our hands is the reaction afterwards by, by price action. You won't know beforehand. There's no way to know. You need to see the reaction. You need to see the volume. You need to see the follow through. You need to see the overall market feeling. You need to see, you need to see so many things that it's, <sighs> we can't know until it's actually hit. So, so for anyone to say that Bitcoin's definitely going down to, to 1000 is very misguided, extremely misguided in my experience. Uh, if this area does fail though, if, if the reaction of this, of this area is not good enough, then, then 1850 is my next area that I'd be looking at. If that area fails, if the reaction is not good enough there, then yes, then I'll join the super bears at, at 1100 or 1300 right around here, which actually is your 942 Fibonacci retracement all the way down around here. And, uh, the kind of the former high of your, of your prior market cycle, which is one of those unspoken rules, um, that the former highs become your new lows for your new market cycle. Anyways, I've probably spoken enough on this uh, this video itself. I guess I'm back to being flat after that nice little uh, shakeout move. It's looking like we're probably going to close underneath this. I have to have you know stops in when I'm doing a, uh, a stream like this, and it's my streamer account to begin with, so I'm not like you know whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say, but it's like it's whatever. Um, but my point is, is that, you know, hey, a quick, quick move up here. And then if we do end this next uh, two hour delta below this area, I'll probably just put the short back on. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's trading. That's that's all that's that's all it comes down to. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it for today. I guess to quickly wrap this up in the more immediate time frames, you have support right here. Thirty five sixty nine. As long as you're closing two hour delta's above there, you know, 
uh, while I do think that this thing breaks downwards, it's you know you got to see that broken first before 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 thirty four seventy five is a reality. And and you know if that area gets hit once again thirty four seventy five, yes, yeah, probably does bounce initially off there. But it's extremely likely that it does break down. Uh, again, still still battling the measure move off this symmetrical triangle, which is in play as long as you're below this area right over here at thirty eight fifty. Um, if if the two hour dildo does close back above thirty six ten, then yes, uh, thirty seven or sorry thirty six uh, seventy certainly much very uh, sorry very much uh, within within reach and uh, and I'd be looking at that area. But right now it looks like we looks looks like sellers are kind of piling back in. Uh, if that area does get hit, then we do have to start thinking about okay. Are we going to actually get that 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 nice move to the 3750ish area, which would just it'd almost be a little bit too easy uh, if we did get it. it. It would be like a little bit too nice of the market to do that. So I'm, I am skeptical about that happening. But uh, but hey, you know, if if 3670 does get taken out, I do look to 3750, and I'd look for a short right there. Again, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is perhaps you know again understand that I'm a short term trader. I'm someone who does this as a living. So my sort of perspectives, my my perfect trades to me are might not be applicable to other people in fact i would suggest that you don't that would be like i just i don't want to ever be looked at as a signals person man it's just it's kind of like it just feels gross man when people are like crown what are you what are you doing here should i go long or short it's like i don't i don't know what's best for you man i don't know what i don't know what your sort of perspectives on the market are all i can do is is explain mine um and and the only reason why i even have these again going off of the video that i uploaded yesterday is because it offers up a good risk reward potential. There's no 100% trade. Just because, it just just if, if Bitcoin did get right around the 3750 area, which would be, you know, the, the two hour 200 uh, exponential moving average, which would also be this form of resistance coming back around from this area right over here. Um, you know, uh, just because I really like a trade right over there does not mean it's 100% gonna work out. No trade is 100%. There's some sort of variability in in there, so I just like the risk reward potential. That's all. Um, but like I said, if if the two hour does end, it do, does close below this twenty one exponential right over here at thirty six oh nine, I will put back on the short, and I'll probably even add a little bit more. Um, although that's variable. I mean, right now it's fighting it with uh, fifty eight minutes and thirteen seconds to go. This thing could you know uh, could could very easily crawl its way back onwards and upwards. So that's what I'm looking at right over here. That's probably going to do it for this morning's video. Again, the more immediate levels to be aware of is just basically this. Range right over here 30 35 69 and then this guy right over here 36 75 as long as bitcoin's within that range really nothing major has changed it's just kind of playing uh playing off the support and resistance right there with this midline at 3609 uh which it, you know if that does get taken out then yes i do look around here um so yeah uh that's gonna do it for this morning i uh, hope everyone's having a beautiful a beautiful wednesday hope everyone's having the best wednesday possible i'll be back on later tonight with some live stream action and take care